I recently talked on this channel about how I built a six-figure net worth in my mid-20s. With this nest egg, I felt comfortable quitting my job to pursue other ways of making a living. I thought I would shed a little bit more light into what products or services I specifically don't really spend money on that has allowed me to achieve this. These are items that I never purchased or bought into because either they were not worth it to me in the long run, or I knew that in order to maintain them or actually have a good experience with them, some of these services or things I would have to purchase over and over. These purchases easily add up to hundreds of dollars a month or even thousands of dollars a year. Hi everyone, my name is Carly. I am an ex-PM turned content creator and model. And on this channel, I create videos around personal finance, modeling, and living intentionally. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss my weekly videos. The first item I never really buy are books. Books are a major source of entertainment for me, but I don't really buy books. That's primarily because I only very occasionally reread books. So the utility a new book gives me is basically the value of reading the book for the first time. And that usually only lasts a week. I can get the same effect by borrowing books. So for me personally, it just doesn't really make sense for me to buy them. There are some great libraries near me and I love checking out books because of the anticipation of getting into a good story. Also, there's the fact that picking up physical books from the library makes me feel like I just went shopping. Borrowing books also saves space for me. I find myself moving every one to two years, sometimes even multiple times in one year. I expect this will be the case for the next few years, so it's just easier if I don't have to lug around books or take the effort to sell the books, usually at a fraction of the cost of what I purchased them for. I also do have a Kindle, which is another huge space saver for me. While I do prefer physical books, with a Kindle I can take multiple books with me wherever I go, and it's super slim, which is a major game changer. I have never really invested in a TV, partly because I never had the space, and if I bought a TV, I would also have to buy some sort of entertainment stand and probably entertainment subscription services too. It ends up being quite a hefty investment. The TV itself is an upfront cost of a couple hundred dollars, and not to mention the increased cost of electricity from using the TV too. Watching TV has never been a huge priority for me, personally. I still love watching shows and movies occasionally, but I will mostly watch it on my laptop, which is, for me, good enough. I feel like I could totally see myself being stuck in my apartment for multiple hours watching TV if I got one. So without a TV, I probably spend more time outside being social or reading or creating. I never really partook in the culture of regularly scheduling beauty appointments. This includes anything from nails, lashes, eyebrow appointments, or any other similar type of beauty maintenance. It's not necessarily because I don't want to. I think it would be nice to have some of these luxuries. I think given my priorities in the last few years, I just could never justify spending hundreds of dollars a month on beauty appointments that would continuously cost me because of the necessary maintenance. I also keep things pretty natural because it helps that for model castings, they might ask me to cast with a bare face or a really natural appearance. I never really kept up with trends because with trends changing on what feels like a monthly basis, I just can't afford to keep up with them. I spoke in a recent video about how trends are a major factor in our consumption as a population. You can check out that video here. But for me, since I don't partake in trends for the most part, I buy pretty basic classic pieces and just wear them over and over. Sometimes I do get bored of my wardrobe, but I feel like there's a part of me that would always get bored of my wardrobe regardless of what I have in my closet. Wearing the same styles not only saves me a lot of money, it saves me the energy of making elaborate decisions on how to pick out my outfit on a daily basis. I don't know about you, but I love being able to just make fewer decisions. I feel like tech gadgets are one of those items that never hold their value. Once the next generation of the product comes out, the value of the item that you purchased will just plummet. Or if there's a new version, the product will just go obsolete. This is the case for any product, whether it be TVs, phones, tablets, or almost any other item that you can plug into the wall. I'm always very aware of that now when I want to buy a new piece of technology, which is probably why I don't buy very many new pieces of tech. One of the main pieces of tech that people consistently upgrade is their phone. I always use my phone to its breaking point, usually either if the phone becomes way too slow or when the battery life gives me like four hours of use before I have to charge it again. Even when I upgrade my phone, I usually buy one version earlier than the latest version, which generally saves me a few hundred dollars each time I make that purchase. I currently have the iPhone 12 and I've had it for like three and a half years now. 
I realized that getting a new phone never really gave me a huge bump in happiness as much as getting my very first phone with unlimited texting did. After that, obviously I had upgrades, but at this point, all of the phones are pretty much the same to me because they serve the same purpose. Basically being able to surf the internet, text and call. I think short of it being able to teleport me, it won't majorly increase my standard of living. Subscriptions are a slippery slope because it's so easy to forget about what we're paying for and how much we're paying for them. This is especially the case the more subscriptions we have. I think this is really interesting because the subscription box market is only supposed to grow by 20% annually from 2021 to 2026. There seems to be subscription boxes in just about every industry these days, from books to wine to snacks and makeup. And with good reason, this is probably one of the more favorable revenue streams for companies. They get regular guaranteed income for as long as users are subscribed to their service. But subscriptions increase our standard of living in ways that we probably didn't otherwise need or expect. If we subscribe to boxes of things, it'll also increase clutter and lead to an accumulation of items that we may not have space for or even use. If there's a subscription box service that you're thinking about purchasing or you're currently purchasing, consider buying one-off things that you'll actually use instead of committing to a monthly cost. This may end up being cheaper for you and encourage you to be more intentional with the things that you consume. You know those packages of cut up fruits or packages of like salads that are generally pretty affordable, but sometimes they can be twice as much money as buying the original form of fruit or buying the ingredients to make the salad from scratch. I never really buy those products because I know that I'm paying for the convenience. The exception to this is if I don't have the time to prep these items and spending money in this area will save me a substantial amount of time. Or if the alternative is buying food from a restaurant and buying the pre-packaged supermarket item is just cheaper. When you buy the individual ingredients, not only do you lower your grocery bill, but you also know exactly what is going into your food. I find cooking from scratch or prepping my fruits just super therapeutic too, but that's just me. I love watermelon, for example, and usually a package of pre-cut watermelon is maybe a quarter of a whole melon, but it costs as much as a whole watermelon. I can easily eat a whole watermelon in one week, so it's just more cost-effective for me to buy the entire fruit instead of pre-cut slices. When we intentionally choose not to purchase certain items, we can very easily save thousands of dollars a year. The way I look at it, this money can instead be put towards other areas that creates much more benefit for us long-term, like a Roth IRA, for example. If you invest in ETFs in your Roth IRA, this will grow tax-free over the course of your life until you withdraw it at retirement age. Anyway, those are some ideas of items I never bought into to be able to accumulate a six-figure net worth. I didn't really buy books. I never bought a TV. I don't schedule regular beauty appointments. I don't partake in trends or the newest technology. I also don't sign up for subscription boxes or pre-packaged convenience foods unless the trade-offs are worth it for me. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out this channel a lot. And if you like this video, I think you would also really enjoy this video on how overconsumption is keeping you in the rat race.